How's it going? Uh, Carlos again. Today we're going to be doing non-metallic metal steel or uh, silver. My white is going to be rotten white. I've talked about it uh, once or twice before. I like this white. I don't know what sets it apart from the uh, skull white, Vallejo skull white, or um, golden white. I just like the way it paints. I like the way it feels on the brush. Uh, it seems to have good flow. It's not too thick. It is a newer paint, so <clears throat> maybe it just kind of has to do with the age of the paint. I couldn't tell you, but it is my go-to white when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, my base color is going to be dark sea blue, and if you guys are familiar with painting Buddha, this is definitely um, Ben Comets's, you know, his recipe. He uses a Schmincke white though, uh, and I, I tried golden white, which uh, some people say is an analog to Schmincke white, but I don't know. I just don't, I, I like the other white more, so there you have it. Without further ado, we're going to go in, start painting. Got a little bit of dark sea blue, we're going to go in pure dark sea blue. And one of the problems I had, especially on the last video, is that a lot of my work was out of focus. And that was actually pretty frustrating because, well, I mean, this is, it does take time and I want it to be a quality product. So when things like that happen, and they seem to happen more than they don't, it's a little frustrating and a little discouraging. I like I used to I used to get mad at my dad because my dad would be like, I can't figure out how to make my iPad work. I was like, Dad, it's an iPad, it's got one button. Come on, buddy. So maybe I'm just getting old. I can't figure out YouTube and cameras. So enough about that sad story. Continuing on. Gonna get the back of the bolter here. Uh, magazine rather front of the magazine. Am I still in focus? Yes. This is um, going to be the same as the gold. So the technique will be the same kind of a dot and stipple uh, with some layers. And again when we talked about um, practicing if you uh, want to practice you can always do this on the back of the bolter, especially if it's a regular bolter marine, because the back of the bolter will be in, invisible. So you can do the back, and then if it doesn't go according to plan, you can go with your preferred bolter painting method on the front, and nobody will be, ever be the wiser. So, that's a little, a little something you can do. All right, so I'm gonna take, um, Kind of uh, maybe a one-to-one. -one. I'm going to go one part white, one part dark sea blue until I get kind of like to my eyes something in between the two of them. And I'm going to take it here along the bottom. I'm going to catch just a few of these parts of this. Maybe this is an ejection button. And then kind of get the back. And if I'm a little bit messy here, that's okay. We can always uh, add a glaze or something, maybe add some scratching. And so part of what I've been doing lately is kind of, I'm adding multiple layers to my uh, stages. So rather than all of the scratching and chipping going in one stage or all of the washes and weathering going in one stage, we sort of start building from the beginning. So we're gonna have multiple passes of a particular effect. This of course is to increase the realism. And it's actually, it's, I'm not sure how it works out with non-metallic metal. I kind of like the way it looks. I'm not sure everybody else does, uh, but they're my models for the most part. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Kirill Kanaev. His uh, online handle is yellow one. And when I first saw some of his non-metallic metal, I was like, and he was doing this stuff. I mean, he was doing this stuff back in like 2010. 
And it's it's astounding. It is jaw dropping. He's kind of moved on to bus and things like that. But his if you can find any of his stuff, and it's on Cool Mini, you can find it. Just look for yellow one. It is unbelievable. And I, I'm pretty sure all of his effects are created without, you know, they're all non-metallic metal effects. And they're just like, I mean, they're stunning. There's no other word for it. So, anyhow. Yeah. We're going to get the bottom of this guy. Bottom of this bolter right here. Magazine. Let's set it again. Make sure I'm on camera. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, now uh, with the same mix, I'll grab a bit more white. And if you uh, want, and this is pretty much what, uh, oh boy, what many people do is you can create a gradient on your wet palette if you're using a wet palette, and then you can kind of grab intermediate colors from there. I sort of mix on the go. Um, I've tried the gradient. I don't seem to be able to get enough paint, so I'm probably just not grabbing enough paint. But I, I'm not a gradient guy, but many people are. Mix yourself up a gradient. It makes your life a lot easier. There's also people who mix, like, when they're doing non-metallic metal, I've seen they do, they mix up all of their shades. And that definitely, you know, can help, especially if you you need to kind of firm up or tone up some of your mid-tones. That's absolutely going to help you. Once again, I don't. I mix. I mix on the fly. But I used to. I used to try to do that. It just like honestly never really seemed to work out for me. Uh, my paint seemed to either dry out or I would kind of have three or four tones that all looked the same. So I just never felt it was effective for me. But plenty of people do it, and they have great looking non-metallic metal. So something to think about. Oh dear, am I getting off camera again? All right, so the back of the magazine, this is not necessarily gonna be a very visible area, so I might just kinda add some noise back there, a little bit of scratching or sippling or whatever, and highlight the back of this little bottom part of the magazine. So now we're pretty much, that's it. We're, we're sort of, we're at where we want to be. Now it's time to go in with just pure white, add some specular highlights, and wrap it up for this part of the of the bolter. So we'll catch the front. And again, we're not going to be, it's not going to be a solid line. Back here. Same. And in the uh, the camera, we'll kind of see these white dots as sort of uh, very bright highlights. And in person, they won't. I don't know. Mine. Sometimes they look good. Sometimes they look just like white dots. So. I'm not getting very good flow. Let's get some better flow. And so you see right here on this on the magazine, I kind of just pretty much dry brushed this with white. So this is one of the things that when we were talking about having a gradient to tone with, or tone up rather, I'll get a little bit of my dark sea blue, a little bit of my white, and I will do that. Just kind of. Kind of provide a little bit of a transition there. So let's see, it's starting to starting to come along. You can see I've already done a little bit to the gun itself, the the black portion of the receiver. That's got some of the, I guess, black non-metallic metal effect on it. So the rear of the magazine port, I'm probably going to add a little bit of 
lining to right here. Just give it more definitive shape. Maybe add some a scratch or two. Just one right there. A couple spots. So I'm gonna actually do something I've been kind of toying with uh, doing, and that's I'm gonna add a little bit of a I guess stipple glaze. So I'm getting mostly dark sea blue, and this transition right here on the magazine port is a little bit rough. So I'm gonna to try to stipple in a little bit of the dark sea blue. Gonna see if we can smooth that out a little. Not too smooth, but add a little bit more, a little gentler transition there. So I like that, that's looking pretty good. Let me get a little bit more of the dark sea blue and white. Again, kind of stipple that in. And I'm just working back and forth between these colors and playing with this transition. And this is definitely, uh, this is a rabbit hole that you can descend down into for quite some time. It's good to do every once in a while because you can begin to see, you know, kind of like what you do and how it affects the surface. And we can go back, add more noise, add more scratches. And it's all creating some texture. Now I'm looking for uh, a little bit of a rust color. I added some rust to the figure, so I'll do that here. This is um, called Rust. This is the game effect uh, from Vallejo, pretty much copying Rizza Rust. It's supposed to be used as kind of a dry brush, but if you add a little water, it works just like any other paint. So put a little bit on the palette. And since this is so bright, I'm, and it, it actually is pretty transparent, so we're lucky, we're fortunate with that. I'll water it down just slightly, and I'll kind of give just a, a hint of the rust in some corners. I'm not gonna overwhelm it. Again, this is, I don't exactly remember what rust color I used on Lieutenant, but it was, it was something kind of slightly darker, not quite as orange, but the outcome is going to be pretty much identical. So right there, maybe alongside of the magazine. And really, it's not necessarily for rust. This is just kind of providing it like maybe an extra part, an extra little bit of contrast. That's one of the reasons that I did it. Right down here. I like that. So you can see it's not quite dry yet. And if I wanted, let's see if I have a different color here. I'll use a little bit of this color, it's uh, Rust Dark Shadow. This is from the Life Color Diorama Rust and Dust set. Great set, pick it up. Um, or if you already have uh, a good rust color, then disregard. Just get a tiny bit on the palette. Now this stuff is pretty strong. So you'll want to heavily water it down and then just give a little bit of rust. water it down. This is actually like a dark brown. Oop, wow, look at that. And there, that's heavily watered down. You can still see it. It's like, that is an intense color. So that's good stuff. I mean, you get plenty, you get 22 milliliters and man, it's heavily pigmented. All right, now we'll move on to the round portion. Same process, highlighting is going to be a little bit different along the midline. We're creating somewhat of a horizon on the barrel. 
So that's what that line is. It's the horizon line. Learned that the other day. I was looking back over some of my non-metallic metal notes. Uh, I got a PDF from the, I think it was uh, Ben Comets. I was a uh, subscriber to his Patreon for a couple glorious months. And that's one of the takeaways. And actually, that, that particular PDF, like the breakdown, is excellent. I haven't, see, that's the thing, like, there's a lot of Patreons out there these days, and it's kind of, I really don't know what other people are offering. I knew that Painting Buddha, having seen quite a bit of their content, uh, I felt like Ben Comets was going to be able to steer me in a good direction. In particular, I find his explanations to be very simple, but also repeatable and super effective. So like, I don't know if he's doing exactly what he's teaching people to do, but his teaching style is very, uh, I would say approachable. I mean, as, as like, if you were to put yourself in the, you know, as a student, it seems like he's, he's really good at being able to explain stuff and not everybody who's a good painter is, I mean, case in point, these videos. So, He definitely has a gift for being able to transmit his knowledge. And for anybody who's really interested, you know, and I get, I'm not affiliated with him whatsoever. I mean, I'm a fan, but that's about it. So if you really want to, if you want to go to the source, I mean, that guy, he's, he's the man. Painting Buddha, it's a shame. R.I.P. I'm going to pour a little bit of my 40 out when I'm done with this tutorial. We miss you. Okay, so and since I'm talking about it, let's let's just do one for let's do one for painting Buddha. I've got a good I've got a good color there to begin with a loaded brush, so we're gonna try the loaded brush, guys. All right, everybody, grab onto your suspenders. Here we go. Get a little tip of white. Go to the edge here. Ooh-wee, that is strong. That's a, that is a bold highlight. Let's see if we can work with that. Then we'll get some more of our rotten white. That's one thing that I'll say that that Schmincke and also Golden, they have that really rich buttery texture that you only get with those high quality art, artist paints. That's why, um, you know, part of what he does when he does his technique is he kind of smears it around. He smears around the white and it's like, just creates like these really great uh, blends. So that was my version. I was using kind of a thinner paint. It's all right. I think I can live with it. So I'll emphasize the bottom there. And that's a little bit, like I said, that's a little bit more. And if you contrast it against the rear of the gun, it's kind of a smoother, a smoother blend. And I could continue to smooth it. You know, this is if you were if you were a person who wanted to get a nice smooth blend, this is one thing you can do. You get some of your um, your dark sea blue. And then you're gonna grab the top kind of towards the middle and then you're gonna come back down to that bright highlight right there and kind of stop right there in the middle smooth that top out rinse your brush feather kind of mop up some of that excess and that's basically what you'll just do you'll go back and forth back and forth and you'll just that's what that's how you glaze it so there we go i'll grab some of my um the heck is this rust dark shadow and I'll water it down a little bit this stuff is intense it's a very it's a very good set I like it but anyways I get right up next to that highlight and we're gonna create this is gonna be our earth line or horizon line and I'm gonna kind of dab that in a little bit and then I'll feather out the bottom of that
let's see, is that in focus, yeah, so there's sort of how you'd highlight the barrel, and on the top we'd add like a little bit of a, kind of a watered down highlight up top as well. One, we could add another, maybe a line right here. So I do the same on the other side, on the front of the barrel. We'll base coat with our dark sea blue. I think I already did, but I'll do it one more time. Mix it with white. And it's still a little wet, but that's all right. We'll mix it with white, come down here. Gonna dab it in there, a little half circle. Get a bit more white. I'm working kind of wet here, so um, if you wanted to wait, you could wait. I might feather the edge slightly. You don't want to be too rough with paint, uh, and when it's in this stage of drying, you'll get like one of those nasty kind of um, coffee rings, and then you got to go back and kind of start start from scratch if you tear your paint layer. Wait till it dries, and then we'll get pure white. Hit the top of the barrel right there. Step in a little bit, I'll spread it out towards the bottom, and then just kind of go around again. This is what we'll do. So the back of the uh, gun, I'll probably continue on with the like I've done here on this uh, part where the magazine is, and you could smooth that out if you so chose. Uh, the circles, these little dials or whatever there, I would highlight it the same as one of these. So I'd get my dark sea blue. Get the circle. And if you wanted, you could, you know, these two right here in particular, you could kind of, maybe if you wanted to make those like, seem like uh, powered, like electrically powered LEDs or something, you can go like, you know, whatever contrasting color you want, purple, pink, blue, green, whatever, you could do that. I've seen that before. I usually, if I'm going to do that, I'll just kind of paint them red. Seems to work. Red and blue, right? Get a little bit more white. And then give it a little half moon right here. This is assuming our light source of overhead, zenithal. And kind of hit the top a little bit, maybe do a little scratch. A little bit more noise. Then I'll grab just a touch more white. And I'll hit the bottom. Up again, maybe a couple specks. Scratch. Ooh, no, that was that was way too way too much. No, oh, well, I'm gonna have to fix that in a little bit. <laughs> you see that there? So how would I fix that? Well, let's get some of my mid-tone. Try to cover it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Fix him up. Maybe get a little bit more of our dark sea blue. Alright, so anyways guys, I mean, you've seen kind of how I would do the different areas, the different shapes on this gun. Whenever you're doing non-metallic metal, break it into its geometric primitives. So I learned somewhere else. So right here we have kind of a flat plane 
uh, one flat plane, one flat plane on top of a larger flat plane, square. This is a cylinder. Cylinders will mostly be the same. Uh, I haven't painted like mountains or horizon lines. This is what we would call a sea earth or a sky earth non-metallic metal. So that's the bottom part would be the horizon, or I'm sorry, the ground and the top is the horizon line. Again, this is a circle shape. So just break it up into tiny, into different sections and that's how you paint each section. Thing to remember, of course, is our light source has to be the same for all of the sections. It has to be consistent. Um, but anyhow, that's the silver non-metallic metal, guys. Thanks for watching.